If you spent any time on NBA Twitter this past month, you've probably heard a lot about Franz Wagner. After going pretty much criminally unnoticed during his first two seasons, he's become NBA Twitter's golden boy. Usually when this happens, a player can become easily overrated, or like in the case of younger players, i.e. Benedict Matherin and Scotty Barnes, their public perception could tank when they still have some kinks to work out. I'm here to tell you that not only is Franz as good as people say, I honestly think he still might be better than people think. His natural offensive ability mixed with his already solid defense and incredible build makes him one of the most unique players in the NBA already. In today's video, I want to take a look at his sophomore season to see not only how good he was, but how much he improved already and how much better I think he could still get. One of the most impressive things about Franz is how versatile a scorer he is. His 18.6 points per game came a variety of different ways, all of which Franz looks incredibly adept at already. He was also one of the most efficient sophomores in the NBA this year, being in his own field for both scoring and true shooting. More efficient than any player scoring more or close to him, and scoring a lot more than any player as efficient as him. His three-point shooting is already exceptional. He's already an elite three-point catcher shooter and efficient in general for behind the arc. He shoots 40.6% on catch and shoot threes, 36% in general for behind the arc, and 43% on quarter threes. Keep in mind, all this is while Franz is playing a system that doesn't generate a lot of three-pointers and not a lot of high-quality ones. The Magic are bottom four in three-point attempts at 31.1 a game, and subsequently, Franz has a negative three-point quality and openness. Franz is a tough shot maker though, and not scared to just stop and pull up for a three. Here, the offense isn't really making anything happen, so Franz just steps right up to the line and it's right over Dame's head. In this play, he does his little fake crossover action, and then just launches this pretty well-contested three, and it's good. In this play later against the Pacers, he sees the paint is clogged, so he takes a quick sidestep and drills another three-pointer. The confidence Franz exudes on this side of the court is almost a talent in its own right at this age. He isn't scared to pull some of these tougher three-pointers and launch from deeper parts of the court. Look here against the Raptors how quickly he hops back into and up with this deep three, which is good. The reason Franz is able to not only get these shots off, but make them, is his natural size mixed with his quick trigger and release. Franz is at 6 foot 10, and this giant stature mixed with his natural skills with the ball means he's an incredibly tough player to guard. Looking at this play versus the Jazz, his height and wingspan means he's able to get this incredibly tough three-pointer over Vanderbilt and somehow into the basket. This all helps to make him one of the better catch-and-shoot three-point shooters too. Like this play here versus the Jazz, he routinely gets the shot up and off before the defenders can get a good contest. Shooting this one before a Horton Tucker even has real time to contest it, Franz is actually getting as much opportunity with the ball on his hand as you would expect from a young scorer of his caliber. Being surrounded by players like Markel Fultz, Cole Anthony, and Paolo Bancaro means he spends a lot of time off ball. But I think this has only demonstrated how intelligent of a player Franz is, and how valuable of an offensive player he is already. Here against the Blazers, Franz comes up on a switch action, but sees Thibault's overplaying the three-pointer and slips through to the basket for an easy dunk. In this one, after the pass to Bamba, he aims near the free throw line for a moment before quickly realizing Murphy and Valanciunas didn't communicate correctly and relocates for an easy three-pointer. Or here, it's as easy as a handoff action, and his quick release means he can get this off and in before Harris even tries to contest. This ability to play off ball is an already incredibly valuable skill, but it's even more so when you consider he's played on a team with Markel Fultz, Paolo Bancaro, and now Anthony Black, who are going to demand a lot of touches with the ball. Another impressive part of Franz's game is how well he operates in the pick and roll. His natural scoring ability mixed with the solid passive vision makes him already look like a natural in the pick and roll. His great decision making is really on display when he's operating there too. Like here against the Pacers, first he hugs the screen really tight, and in the process secures Nimhard behind him, then explodes right to the basket to toss his one up before Turner can even get a good contest. In a similar vein, he gets the Blazers, he secures pain behind him for a second, before punishing Nurkic for not playing up and sinking the easy mid-range. Here against the Jazz, he uses the screen and his body language to create an ample opening here for another easy three-pointer. It's another one of those similar actions we just talked about here against the Spurs, but after he secures Vassell behind him, he sees the trap coming and tosses a quick one off to Bull Bull for an easy bucket. He's really good at these cross-court dives out of the pick and roll, finding his open teammates before the collapse defense can recover. Here against the Pistons, the defense doesn't communicate well, and Franz finds this perfect little pocket to put it right into Sugg's hands for an easy three-pointer. Franz's speed and IQ in the pick and roll means he's pretty tough to guard when he's in those situations. Look here how against the Pelicans, he chooses to jab the pick and roll, and waits right till the end to find open Suggs in the corner for this incredibly tough long dime. Here, against the Blazers, he waits right till he gets to the point, then explodes by Nurkic for an 
easy floater layup. This little float or toss layup is something he likes to go to a lot. And Franz is actually one of the better driving scorers in the NBA. Franz is top three in sophomore drives per game and top two in points off those drives. His ability to get to the basket and finish at the rim is already streets ahead of many of his peers. Look at this play against the Pacers. He keeps a steady pace and takes a quick pass before doing another toss layup that Miles Turner can't block or contest. This little toss actually seems to be one of Franz's signature moves. Having mastered this very unconventional layup style that throws off defenders around him. Look at how hard it is for Jaron Jackson Jr. to get a great contest on this layup. Franz shoots these toss layups almost like if you combined a hook shot and a floater, which he's also great at both of those, and because of that, defenders aren't able to stop the shot consistently. First here against the Kings, he drives right into bonus and uses this to slip right over him with not much space. Against the Pelicans, he bruises with a much bigger Larry Nance Jr. until he finds a slight opening, and this unconventional go-to move of his means he can throw it over and in the hoop. Earlier in that same game too, he gets put in a similar situation with Dyson Daniels, and it's almost like magic how he gets this shot off and in over Daniels. Against smaller defenders too, this means Franz doesn't need to always bully or find the right spot. Like against Dame here, he is too tall and too high up, so this truly is just a perfect float shot for him. Franz's creativity while driving goes past more than just his unique layup style too. In this play against the Raptors, look at how confidently he hops, steps over and around Thaddeus Young before going right up for an easy layup. Or just a bit later in the same game, he can't get the step on Pascal Siakam, so he instead quickly plants, spins, and slides by Siakam for another easy layup. I also really like this play versus the Kings. Off the screen, he power dribbles at the free throw line, and Sabonis and Lyles both jump a bit, so he takes two tough steps around and finds an easy layup at the rim. Here he knows Eubanks is going to expect his toss layup from earlier, so he wraps around him and then fakes to the left and switches mid-air to the right side. I particularly love this play against Memphis. Franz gets past Roddy then does a really nice fake into a mini hang layup for an easy release. Franz is also really tough when heading towards the basket, absorbing and adapting to contact. Against the Pacers, he splits the defense and takes it right off of Turner's chest for an easy layup. Here versus the Raptors, he actually just straight up eats Chris Boucher's arm to the face and still stays strong for a pretty open layup after. Look at how well Franz uses his size to react to contact with tough situations too, shooting an almost Dirk-like leg kick to get a short jumper over Harrison Barnes. A big part of Franz's skill in the paint is his composure though. He's very confident and capable with the ball, and that is just another invaluable skill to have as such a young player. Look at how well he operates in this poor two-on-three situation, beginning a Euro like he's going to shoot on his right side, then shifting to his left hand in air to get a great look at the rim for two. The final part of Franz's game I want to touch on is how clutch of a player he is. He earned the nickname fourth quarter Franz this past season, and much like his finishing, a big part of that is how composed he stays during big moments. Sometimes it's as simple as stepping into a big three-pointer like he does here versus the Grizzlies, or he can even be incredibly smooth during the game's biggest moments, stepping back here to just absolutely net this clutch three over Turner's head. I like this play against the Raptors where he gets his important putback, and it was all made possible because he focused on boxing out Van Fleet till right when it's necessary, then he dives to the basket. I think no game really illustrates just how clutch Franz is more than his fourth quarter and overtime performance against the Kings. It's such a close game with not much time left, Franz just continue to find really good shots and make them. Down five with two minutes left, he goes right at Sabonis, hooking his layup a little more and getting that incredibly tough shot in somehow. Later down six with only 46 seconds to go, he flashes that composure I was talking about earlier, waiting just a bit and working around Sabonis for an easy finger roll to make it a four point game. Down four, he makes a crafty cut off the inbounds and once again takes such a composed shot. His composure, like I mentioned, is such a huge part of this. It seems almost impossible to put Franz in a situation he's uncomfortable in. I think what's most impressive about Franz Wagner is how much of a leap he made in just one year. As great as Franz looked at his rookie season, he already looked like such an improved player in his sophomore season. His numbers across the board are better, and he clearly just passes the eye test. He did exactly what you want from a young player, which is just to continue to improve. He is one of the only high-level players from the 2021 draft with no real questions around him. His offensive game is incredibly diverse and composed, as well as advanced for his age. Considering how special Orlando looked in the second half of last season, how great Paolo can be, and how many solid young pieces they have, Franz is the perfect player for this team. Franz's skill playing both on and off the ball means he can slot perfectly into whatever offense and complement players like Paolo Bancaro and Anthony Black, while still being capable of being the main offensive initiator when needed. I truly do believe Franz lives up to the hype and will continue to. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing, and let me know whether you agree or disagree with what I said down below. As always, thanks for watching, and peace.